Redstone is a powder. That's it. A humble red sparkle you dig out of caves somewhere between lava, creepers, and the desperate hope of finding diamonds. It sits in your inventory like glitter in a toddler's pocket, mysterious, mildly annoying, and full of potential. And yet, this confusing little substance has quietly transformed Minecraft into something so complex that, to this day, I still cannot wrap my head around it. Let me be clear. I'm not a redstone expert. I am not the person building flying machines or auto sorters. I'm the person standing beside those builds, nodding politely, while quietly wondering how one single misplaced repeater can break a 300 block machine. My redstone skills top out at wiring a lever to a door. Anything beyond that? Sorcery. But here's the thing. I love redstone. Not because I understand it, but because I don't. Because it takes a sandbox game and adds an entire hidden layer of logic and possibility that I find endlessly fascinating. Redstone isn't just a feature, it's a revolution. A dusty, glowing invitation for players far smarter than me to turn their Minecraft worlds into programmable marvels. So if you're a fellow casual player who's ever peeked into a redstone build and thought, that looks like someone spilled spaghetti on a circuit board, this one's for you. Let's explore how redstone, this baffling little powder, changed the game forever. Origins of dust, from torch to tech wizard. Back in Minecraft beta 1.3, 2011, redstone was introduced and most players had no idea what to do with it. It was marketed as Minecraft electricity, but it felt more like black magic mixed with a car battery and a vague understanding of physics. Players discovered they could use redstone dust to connect a switch to a door. And honestly, that was really impressive. Opening a door from five blocks away felt like we'd achieved space travel. Then came redstone torches pressure plates and levers. Suddenly, Minecraft wasn't just a game about building tree houses and punching cows, it was about circuits. It was about potential. It was about wiring a system so that a sheep walked onto a pressure plate and launched fireworks from your roof while opening a fridge. Of course, we were all idiots at first. Most early redstone contraptions looked like spaghetti exploded across the grass. As someone who still gets nervous placing a comparator, I can say with confidence that most of us were just guessing. But we didn't care. This was a sandbox game, and Redstone was that weird toy no one understood, but everyone wanted to master. From idiots to engineers, birth of Minecraft logic. Somewhere along the line, someone built an AND gate. Not in a textbook, not in an exam, but in Minecraft. Using torches and dust, they recreated a fundamental building block of computers. In that moment, that was the true beginning of the Redstone Revolution. Soon, the community began to realise that Redstone could replicate digital logic. And, or, not, XOR, I don't know what that is. All those confusing terms you half remember from school suddenly made sense when you saw them light up a piston door. It was like watching algebra do a backflip. People built calculators, then clocks, then whole functioning CPUs, all inside a game about blocks. And with every new contraption, the collective IQ of the Minecraft community seemed to rise. We were no longer just gamers, we were accidental engineers. Meanwhile, I was still trying to figure out why my torch-powered elevator only went down. Progress. Automation Nation. Doing more by doing less. Then came the realisation that Redstone could do things for you. And that was the beginning of the end for manual labour in Minecraft. Why plant and harvest wheat when you can build an auto farm? 
I kill mobs by hand when you can make a grinder that churns out loot like a vending machine? Why mine blocks when a flying machine could do it while you were drinking juice? Automation became the holy grail. Sugarcane farms, cactus sorters, cow crushers, don't ask. And item sorters appeared in every world. Redstone let you replace effort with efficiency. And suddenly, survival wasn't about fighting zombies. It was about fine tuning your hopper timers. Of course, some builds lagged the server to death, especially when Chad tried to make a sorting system for every single item in the game, including dead bushes and poisonous potatoes. But that was the beauty of redstone. It didn't care if your goals were noble or chaotic. It just worked, kind of. Rise of the redstone gods, YouTubers who made it cool. For every struggling amateur redstoner, there was a beacon of hope, a YouTuber, a redstone whisperer, a wizard who could make a piston door with no visible wiring and a working piano that played actual music. Enter the redstone gods. Mumbo Jumbo, Ethos Lab, Il Mango, and Cube Hamster. These creators didn't just build machines, they built dreams. They uploaded 30 minute tutorials that turned our little torch powered doors into full on security systems complete with alarm sounds and biometric authentication. Sort of. These guys spoke in circuits and breathed repeaters. They made the impossible look easy and the easy look beautiful. Watching them made you believe you too could become a redstone genius. Until you tried to copy their build and realised you forgot one comparator and now your sheet cooker is on fire. Still, they created a culture. Redstone became cool. It became aspirational. Even if you weren't a builder or a PvPer or even practically good at the game, you could still contribute by wiring up a melon farm that played Megalovania every time at harvest. The rise of technical servers. Welcome to the end game. For some reason, Redstone wasn't just a game mechanic. It was life. Enter technical Minecraft servers. Places like SciCraft and ZipCrowd, where the smartest, most sleep deprived players gathered to break the game in the name of science. These servers weren't casual, they were digital laboratories. Players there didn't build houses, they built flying machines that traversed dimensions. They didn't have farms, they had entire ecosystems of contraptions, all wired to one central storage system that could alphabetically sort every item in the game and make you a sandwich. Technical players lived in a different world. Their redstone builds have more parts than a car engine, they use words like carpet duper and chunk loader and casually mention breaking bedrock like it's no big deal. From the outside looking in, it's like watching a redstone TED talk, but in another language. The update arms race. Every component matters. Redstone wouldn't have evolved without help from Mojang. With every major update, the game's engineers were handed new toys. Pistons in beta 1.7, dispensers, droppers, hoppers, comparators, observers, the list kept going. Each new item wasn't just a tool, it was a revolution. Pistons let you move blocks, hoppers allowed item transport, observers made pulse detection possible. Suddenly, you didn't need to be a wizard, you just needed to understand how these components clicked together, which, in my case, still isn't happening. Every update sparked new ideas. Old farms got rebuilt, contraptions got smaller, faster and smarter, redstone devices that once required the space of a small nation could now fit inside a chunk. Players adapted. They evolved. I mostly just sat back and admired their brilliance. From a safe distance. Redstone in real life. Accidental education. Somewhere, somehow, redstone crossed into the real world. Not physically, we don't have glowing red powder that opens doors, yet, but educationally. Minecraft Education Edition began using redstone to teach logic, programming and systems thinking. 
kids who hated maths were suddenly building binary calculators in a block game. Teachers realised they could sneak in STEM learning disguised as play. There are kids who learn the basics of computer science from Redstone before ever writing a line of code. They know what a clock pulse is, they understand inputs and outputs. Meanwhile, I'm still wiring the same door from paragraph one, but the point stands. Minecraft became a stealth education tool and Redstone was its chalkboard. Builders versus Redstoners, the great debate. Not everyone loves Redstone. Some people just want to build castles and cozy villages without hearing click, click, click from a nearby observer. And fair enough. Redstone is messy, it's loud, it turns your basement into a terrifying maze of wires that even you don't understand after two days. There's always been a bit of tension between builders and redstoners. Builders want clean aesthetics, redstoners want functionality. Builders want a nice kitchen, redstoners want the fridge to restock itself and a fire chicken when opened. But over time, a middle ground emerged. Hidden piston doors, seamless elevators, secret bunkers, redstone became a way to enhance builds, not just complicate them. I may not understand how it works, but I'll happily push the button. Breaking the game one circuit at a time. And finally, the most chaotic part of redstone, the exploits. Minecraft was never meant to be this smart. Redstone players figured out how to crash servers, delete bedrock, and make things fly that absolutely should not fly. They discovered zero tick farms, TNT duping, instant wire, block updater detectors, and entire loops that mess with Minecraft's tick rate just for fun. They created contraptions that technically shouldn't work, but they do, because Mojang forgot to say, don't. This chaos is part of Redstone's charm. It's un unpredictable, it's brilliant, it's borderline criminal, and Mojang, they've learned to live with it. Because deep down, they know Redstone is what keeps Minecraft interesting. Not just building, not just fighting, but breaking the game in beautiful, dusty ways. The dust we deserved. Redstone isn't just a mechanic. It's a mindset. It's the idea that even in a game full of monsters and magic, logic still has a place. That creativity doesn't stop at a castle or a garden. It keeps going until you've wired every corner of your world to run on buttons, levers, and sheer determination. It's not always pretty. It's often confusing. And yes, it sometimes breaks everything. But Redstone reflects the heart of Minecraft. A game where the only limit is your imagination and maybe your frame rate. So next time you find a redstone block, don't roll your eyes and chuck it in lava. That's not just dust, that's potential. That's rebellion. That's the powder that turned builders into engineers and servers into marvels of design. Redstone didn't just automate farms, it automated wonder. And who knows? Maybe that sheep-powered supercomputer you're building will be the next great invention. Just don't ask me how it works. I'm still figuring out that lever.